Hello and welcome to the Cinema Tirana YouTube channel. I am Stefano Tirana. This is a channel for Christians from across traditions to come together to talk about movies, media, and the world from a Christian perspective. And today we are talking about Thor, Love, and Thunder. Thor, Love, and Thunder is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is the fourth Thor movie and is the second Thor movie directed by Taika Waititi. He is a New Zealand filmmaker. Uh, he made some pretty great uh, indie films and he's kind of a, a pretty big star nowadays he, not just directing but also starring in things as well so let's take a look at this film from a Christian perspective we're going to be looking at the symbolic meaning is in this film the kind of subliminal messages if there is such a thing and we're going to be taking a look at uh, maybe some warnings for this film um, some ways to understand it all those good things. Let's get right into it. So Thor Love and Thunder is a, a pretty uh, spectacular film in terms of its uh, actual production quality. The visual effects were amazing. Uh, we watched the film in IMAX. It was quite uh, the experience. Uh, some really great performances. Uh, standout performance was absolutely Christian Bale. His, uh, his role as an antagonist was absolutely yeah creepy and you know gave you some chills and um his motivations are, are really well plotted out in the film and i think uh and i think he's probably one of the best villains in the marvel cinematic universe that being said let's break down the symbolic meanings of this film and kind of get a sense of uh how this film fits in context with the world around us right now uh the world around us right now is um deconstructing a lot of categories and way of understanding things. We uh, as a society are deconstructing things like uh, what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, very basic things that uh, seem self-evident, but for the sake of maybe feelings, inclusivity, values like that, we've been sacrificing truths about our physical existence and this film is definitely subject to that uh, this film uh, just to name a few things breaks down the idea of what it means to be Thor you know Thor isn't just a man from Asgard he's um, he's a woman from Earth and uh, Jane Foster is just as much Thor as uh, Thor Odinson himself Valkyrie uh, a female is a is a king is the king of Asgard of New Asgard in this film. So kings don't have to be men; they can be women. Um, it just sounds ridiculous to even say it out loud. And um, men and men can procreate, as in the case of Korg. So you see very basic truths, not even just religious truths, but the actual breaking down of. Uh, physical reality for the sake of some kind of belief structure that puts um, feelings on top of everything else. Feelings are a good thing when they're in, in the right order, but having a hierarchy of uh, a hierarchy of values based on feelings is not a <laughs> great way to run things. And when things begin to break down in this manner, uh, we see societies descend into polytheism and this film tackles with polytheism unlike any other MCU film prior to it. We've seen kind of little glimpses of it in uh, the previous Thor movies. He's obviously a Norse god. And then we saw much more of it with uh, the Disney Plus show Moon Knight. That was a kind of, um, that was kind of Marvel dipping its toes into the Egyptian pantheon. But here we see gods from all types of cultures, uh, fictional ones, real ones from all around the galaxy. And they kind of uh, live in this city in the heavens. <laughs> so we see a kind of uh, Tower of Babel motif happening right now that, um, you know, society has tried to build a tower up to the heavens or in this case, uh, tried to build a tower based on the wrong values and um, things have been <laughs> have been becoming unintelligible. God is working to disperse our languages again in some way uh, because words don't even mean what they mean anymore. They can mean literally anything. <laughs> and with the Tower of Babel comes uh, God handing over the nations to uh, 
lower deities, and you see that explicitly in this film. It's kind of quite remarkable how this film works symbolically in a truthful way. It is truthful, but it's not describing like good truth. It's like, here's the way evil operates. Here's the way um, denying truth operates. So on one hand, you have polytheism as a response to um, the destruction of real truths. And on the other hand, on the other hand, you have this proclivity towards uh, atheism. And that's kind of symbolized by the character of Gore, the God Butcher. He's literally a character um, who's possessed by the power of this sword, whose uh, mission is to kill these uh, gods, these lower deities, because these deities are malevolent. They don't care about humanity, they only care about their self-interest. And that's um, actually incredibly truthful uh, to the actual world, the way God um, had structured things and the way uh, after the fall of these sons of God, of these um, fallen angels, the way the world started to operate under polytheism. As I say over and over again, um, the gods of this world, uh, they do not like you, they do not love you, they do not care for you, stop serving them. And um, they're kind of like that in this movie, which is, which is true. Um, except for maybe Thor, he has a, uh, kind of interesting character arc. But you know, in, it's, it's strange that in some way this film is truthful in that sense. And then at the end of this film, you have um, an encounter with this character named Eternity. And um, it's not, this character is kind of uh, symbolic, symbolically represented as kind of the universe, this um, kind of naturalistic be all, end all. Instead of there being uh, a first mover in Aristotelian thought or you know, just good old God in Judeo-Christian thinking. This character in the Marvel Universe is a uh, kind of a stone cold being who is kind of one with the universe in one way. So, you know, in, in that way they got, they got things wrong. <laughs> this film also is kind of scary for children. Uh, children get kidnapped by shadow monsters. So I think if you're watching this with um, kids, it's gonna be uh, kind of difficult to break things down for them in a way that they can understand. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend it to young ones. And again, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna tell you how to raise your kids. So <laughs> uh, that's up to you. Um, there is some kind of okay, good things in this film. I think the uh, emotional arcs of uh, Jane and Thor and uh, the children kind of get this, they kind of rise above to defeat uh, the enemy in this film. Jane's kind of self-sacrifice is is more of a Christian idea as opposed to the rest of what's going on in this film, which is refreshing to see. She kind of gets to heaven by means of martyrdom, which is also a very Christian idea. Th these kind of good aspects of these gods are, are not native to paganism. They're a borrowing from Christianity. So, you know, as uh, Christians in these times that we're living in, I think we have to double down on truth, double down on uh, basic, basic truths about how God made us, how God designed us, how we're meant to live. You know, men and women uh, having their role as, as separate and good things the way God intended and not uh, mixing categories for, for the sake of feelings or not being offensive or these kind of weird things. And it's, it's highly indicative of the way Disney's going right now. Disney is actively socially engineering uh, these films to create social change through uh, film activism. This isn't a conspiracy. This isn't fear mongering. Uh, this is confirmed from leaked corporate interviews with Disney. Disney as a company um, and most of these uh, major media conglomerates have been infested by activism in ways that genuinely have not been seen before. These companies uh, have operated under, you know, traditional Christian values for uh, maybe the early part of their existence, uh, but not an active way of trying to engineer society in this way. And especially with these films targeted towards kids, I 
I genuinely want to warn parents about what their kids are intaking on a daily basis. <sighs> and uh, it's tough to say because I, I just want to watch good movies. Uh, quite frankly, I want to watch good artistic movies. And um, we, we have to be on high alert as Christians. So I want to thank everybody for watching. If you uh, have found this video helpful in any way um, or want to get the message out there, I urge you to subscribe to this channel. It really helps with the numbers. Give it a, give this video a like, uh, give something in the comments. It just helps get the word out there and also helps just support me as a creator if you think I'm doing a good thing. I think with that being said, let's continue the discussion in the comments and God bless and thanks for watching.